Hello viewers, and welcome to another edition of Spartan Showcase. I'm your host, Andy Kiros, and today I welcome Principal Mr. Rubin to the show. Welcome back, Andy. So as you know, Mr. Rubin, last week was homecoming week at Oxbridge High School. Yeah. How do you feel that went? I thought it went pretty well. I thought there was, um, I thought there was obviously a lot of spirit in the building. I liked that um, a couple of the days really had to do, I think, with, with kind of joining um, service, um, you know, to have a... You know, for example, an, an Alzheimer's uh, Awareness Day, along with uh, you know, sort of the the more traditional Spirit Days, and um, you know, it's always kind of fun on Friday to see you know, 400, 500 kids all dressed in orange and black, with, a, with only a couple of exceptions. And uh, you know, overall, I thought the the day from the, the 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 different Spirit Days to the rally to certainly a very successful Saturday here with all uh, all the sporting events was and the dance was was overall pretty positive. And what did you enjoy the most about the week? Um, <laughs> it being over. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, in, in all seriousness, you, you worry about a lot of things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the fact that the student body is able to come together in, in a lot of different ways is, is fun to see. Um, I thought the, the rally was, um, was pretty positive as a whole. Um, but, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I want to applaud the work of Mr. Calarese and, and the athletic program. Uh, that Saturday was a busy Saturday. It, it rained toward the end of it, but we had uh, amazing crowds here, starting with the, the field hockey and girls soccer games against Oxford, the boys soccer game against BMR, the football game against Auburn. We had great crowds all day. There were people in and out of campus from you know, pretty much 8.30 in the morning all, all the way through. The, the classes all had you know, representatives. Um, you know, it, was, it was great to have you know, Ms. Edwards and Ms. Hurdle, Ms. Barstow, Mrs. Wise. Um, you know the the class advisors you know on hand so it, it really showcased for I think a lot of people just how strong a community we have and the fact that the games ran as as clockworkly as they did is is a testament to everyone's sort of coordination and uh, going back to the Friday of pep rally um, we focus more on an activities day where students um, got the opportunity to pick from a variety of activities hosted by the teachers. So next year, do you see the school going more towards an activities day rather well, than a pep rally? I think, I think, no, I don't think we'd ever get, get uh, I, I think the pep rally is here to stay. I think what makes the activity day compelling is that it's a half a day. Um, so as long as homecoming coincides with that half day, I think it makes sense. Um, it's hard when you only have three hours of school to do an, you know, an hour and a half of classes, I mean, you're not going to send kids to six 20-minute classes and then have an hour and a half rally and, and be on your way. I think if we have a full day, uh, that's where we'd have to have some conversations about what that would look like. So you don't think you'll tweak the activities day or you're kind of leaving in a similar format as this year? Um, yeah, again, yeah, I, I like the format this year. I thought it kept kids moving. It kept mm -hmm. kids engaged. Um, as a teacher, I know how hard it was to keep kids uh, focused on classwork when you know everybody's kind of gearing up for a rally, particularly where school lets out at 10:30. Yeah. I can't imagine having an activities day that goes for five hours and then you know, or four hours, and then you have lunch and then go off for an hour and a half of mm -hmm. a pep rally. Mm -hmm. I think that might be a little bit overkill, but that's something that you know we'll we'll address when we get to you know October or September of 2017. Oh, You'll boy. be in college. Yeah, I'll be in college. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> and you've now gone through two full homecoming weeks here as principal. Do you envision any changes to like, like the spirit week or the, or the layout of the week as a whole? Uh, you know, honestly, I'd like to leave it in the hands of the student mm -hmm. council um, or, or the students. And one of the things that I really try to encourage is student voice. Uh, my job at that, at that point is to ask questions and uh, make sure things are going to be organized. But... I shouldn't be micromanaging what the week looks like. So, you know, people may come up with uh, different themes. People may come up with uh, different ways to incorporate, you know, service. I've seen schools that have done like a, a school-wide service day. I've seen schools that have done things like a school-wide cleanup day, and they get you know two or three hundred kids involved in it. Those are those are great re uses of time. They're great resources. They're learning activities. They're they're ways kids learn outside of the classroom. I, you know, I'd support any of that, but it'd be one of those things that. You know, if the students aren't on board, aren't on, aren't on board to coordinate it, then it's it's silly for me to just say, "Well, this is how it should be." Yeah. And uh, it was really qu uh, cool to hear from you in the broadcast booth at Saturday's yeah, football game. It was fun. Yeah, can you like um, explain to the viewers your uh, your previous career oh, at, in broadcasting? Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it was sort of one of those things when you're 
when you're a teacher, and I think a lot of the teachers out there would, would know this, especially as a, as a new teacher, you're, you're not making a lot of money, so you're trying to find ways to, to make ends meet, and most of us had second jobs, so um, you know, I was coaching and teaching, and um, at the time I, I was still working in college sports, so you know, I've had the good fortune to work as a, in sports broadcasting, both at the high school, the collegiate, and uh, levels for the last, oh, a long time. So. I don't want to date myself, but you know, pretty much since I was a student myself. I mean, I started as a as a high school student calling basketball games um, back for the Malden High School Golden Tornadoes back in the day, um, and it just sort of continued. When I was in college, I was a writer more than a, a broadcaster, but um, you know, it's something I, I like to do. It's it's something that I, I see now more as a, a hobby than a profession, um, but I think it'll always be part of who I am and. You know, for me, it's an opportunity to, to get on, talk to you guys, and, and say thank you. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to come on and, and call, a, call a play-by-play. That's, that's your job. But, um, you know, for me to, to have this, this venue and to have, uh, you know, the support of people like Mr. Giles and the community to be able to look out into a camera and say thanks to people who support us is, is important. You seem like you're uh, really busy there, Mr. Rubin. <laughs> uh, I am. I, you know, I, I think... You know, some, some, there's this old quote that says, you know, if you ever want to get something done, ask someone who's busy. And I don't like downtime. I don't like being flat. And um, I've always been somebody who's, you know, a friend of mine and I were talking about this a few days ago that when we went to college, you know, we were talking about, you know, running the, the da a daily newspaper and playing intramural sports. And you know, I was in a fraternity and, you know, living, uh, you know, working, working a job and living there and managing the hockey team and traveling with three sports teams. It gives you a sense of how to manage your time. So I know like my day today, a after I leave you, I'm, I'm gonna walk through a couple of classes and then I have a meeting with you know, the MIAA to honor our, um, our, our football and our girls soccer teams for some sportsmanship, which is great. But I like to have things that are, um, I like to keep things busy. I, I like yeah. to keep things uh, so that t the time goes by and I feel like at the end of the day, I, I've. I've gotten the most out of my minutes. And to go along with that, you and Mr. Kauris have recently teamed up to create a new Student Advisory um, Athletic Council. Yep. Can you explain um, to the viewers what that's about? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Student Voice a few minutes ago, Andy. I, I think it's one of the things that we can do a better job of encouraging. Last year when we were going through the, the steps of our school improvement plan, um, we met with the student council and, and kids had put up some really, you know, big, big ticket, big ideas about you know, support for the athletic program or, or um, enhancements for the athletic program and ways that we can sort of bridge the gap between school sports and community. And that's something I think a student athlete advisory council can do. Give some direction to people like me or Mr. Calories who are making decisions. Um, you know, the four teams at home, um, that was his brainchild um, and it required a lot of coordination to get, actually it was the boys soccer game to to get that moved. Um, you know, BMR didn't have to move that game to play here and um, certainly to play on our homecoming. Um, you know, it ended up working out okay for them, but those are challenging conversations to have and you know, sometimes the, the compromise was you know, football's playing at three, field hockey's playing at nine. Well, you know, if you have student voice on that council or student voice advising us with things that are, are, are worthwhile, it's only going to make the place better, and you know we do have our our um, our programs that are you know all but required to have a community service project. Mm -hmm. It's something Mr. Calories feels very strongly about being an Uxbridge person and an Uxbridge native and a graduate. Um, but we can use a student athlete advisory council to maybe join teams together to sponsor events that are here, and I think it's it's only going to help encourage a voice and we really just need to have a, a few student athletes that want to make a difference and want to talk about some of the things that we think could make it as small as you know we want to have a, a joint service project between the field hockey and the soccer programs to we really want to think about how we can get another field here or we want to think about how we can build lights or um, how we can get more programs playing here and not traveling all over town. And how can students get involved in that? Send an email. <laughs> I mean, really, it's as simple as sending an email to Mr. Calories. I think at this point, we've had a couple of kids that have, have indicated an interest. It's only been out there for about a day or so at this point. But by the time people have watched this, hopefully we'll, we'll have had a, 
had a few more students indicate interest. And speaking of students reaching out and taking the initiative to start something, one senior recently uh, created a DECA chapter here at the high school. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that came up a lot, both in the, the conversation about school improvement last year, but just in general, we, we don't have a lot of clubs here. I mean, when you think about it, um, I think it's awesome that I go to a student council meeting, there's 60 kids there. Mm -hmm. I also think it's tragic when you go to a student council meeting and there's 60 kids there because that's it. I mean, it's one of the only shows in town. Um, and I'm not saying that we don't have a lot of opportunities and I don't want people to say, oh, he's trying to take kids away from student council. No, that's, that's not it. But we don't have many co-curricular co clubs. Mm -hmm. you know, we have an anime club, we have a pride club, we have the yearbook. But something like DECA is co-curricular. It, it, it links up with students who are interested in business and math and finance and entrepreneurship. And um, we had a student say, you know, he was interested in starting a chapter. We found the way to um, get support from the, the state organization they've been in. Um, we found an advisor and, you know, we'll see how things progress. But that, that's something we really need to do is mm -hmm. give kids opportunities. Student council, NHS, you know, those are, are great ways for kids to you know, get involved with service and, and giving back to the community, but they're not academic. Yeah. So if there are specific things like, you, know, you sometimes hear of schools that have you know, science teams and math teams and debate teams, I think that's where the, one of the next places we have to grow. And you can share, and can you share thoughts on how to encourage students to take leadership roles like that? Yeah, ask. I mean, if yeah. there's, there's really, I ask three questions. If a student comes to me and says, I wanna start a club, I asked three mm -hmm. questions. Number one is, is it going to be open to all kids? Uh, I really don't want a club that's going to be, you know, four kids and their best friends sitting in a room somewhere after school um, doing God knows what. Um, you know, it, it, does it, so is it open to all students mm -hmm. is one. Two, do you have an adult who's willing to support you? Um, we can work on, you know, helping find that, but is there somebody in the building that you've thought about? Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, one of the things I'm hearing some, some chatter about is having an art club. And I know there are a couple of people that are interested in, in getting that going. Um, but there are a couple of adults that I think would be very good or specific for that. Um, and then third would be, is it going to add something to the community? Um, is it going to add something to the school? And something like DECA, it obviously adds something from an academic and an extracurricular standpoint. Um, but, you know, if, again, if it's the, you know, you know, the Film Appreciation Club. Yeah. We, had a, we had a group at one of my schools that was a, a gaming club. There were kids that would, you know, bring in their consoles and hook them up to the TVs in the classrooms, and uh, they had TVs in those classrooms. And, they, you know, it was, it was a safe, kind of controlled place for kids to hang out together at, for, for a couple hours after school. And I, I like those. I want mm -hmm. kids here, and I think uh, kids feel like they, uh, or students, I think, in general, they feel comfortable enough to stay here. So if there are, are ways we can encourage that, let's do it. Yeah. And that's all for today's show. Thank you from everyone from UCTV who um, contributed to this production. Thank you, Mr. Rubin, for your time. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. And we'll it. see you uh, hopefully in two weeks again. A couple again, weeks, show. for yeah. sure.